Hello everyone, welcome to our solo exhibition of François Sullivan's Five Decades of Painting. On the occasion of this 2020 Toronto Art Fair, this collection is hanging at the gallery for the time, the duration of the Art Fair. We put together a group of painting which are published in this virtual catalogue, which you are invited to look at. Uh, this is a selection of uh, more than 60 works spanning five decades. And as you know, Françoise has been active. She's been painting and sculpting for the last seven decades, actually. And uh, now let me introduce you to Françoise Sullivan, painter, who is being interviewed by Louise Derry, director of Galerie de Ducam in Montreal. Welcome. We are surrounded by some of your last paintings. Oui. It's marvelous. <laughs> You've been very courageous since all these months, trying to work even if many artists have mentioned about their anxiety and difficulty of uh, staying concentrated on the work. But you've worked many days during these months, doing new paintings? I, 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 of course I work hard. Uh, actually, uh, this last painting, I had to finish it and I start painting and after an hour I was tired and I thought, oh, that's silly. I can't be tired. I have to go on. And I went on for six more hours. No stop. <laughs> You know, so many people are talking about your energy. So what you just said, it's about energy and something we feel in the paintings. Sometimes you say that the painting has to decide for itself. The, the painting isn't controlled on you. It does. Yeah. And it, it's a surprise every time. <laughs> yes. But you don't necessarily do what you had thought of that you would be doing. It comes out as it wishes. <laughs> yeah. so, so one of the questions we always have with artists doing that kind of work is, how do you start a painting? What's the beginning? Is it a motive? Is it a dream? <laughs> is it um, a concept? Is it a first sign? A grid? What's the first? step? It, it's not always the same. Mm -hmm. um, for this one, for instance, which is very different from what I've been doing before, I started by doing those black marks and not knowing where I was going. And uh, I think uh, I left it for a day, came back, and then did the other, the rest. And um, uh, I was showing it to my family. Some liked it, some didn't. Uh, Vincent especially liked that one. Mm -hmm. And it's, he said that it reminded him of uh, Mondrian. Okay, so you learn from your children. <laughs> <laughs> I know that your son are always around you. Uh, they participate in your life as a, as a mother, but as a woman, as an artist. They've been there all the time. A year ago, you have lost a son, oh, Jean Christophe. But and I think of him all the time. All the time. So but beautiful. not so far after we left to Italy together. That was difficult. That was difficult yeah. to leave. It was a way to live this wonderful moments you have had in the beginning of the 70s in Chianti, yeah. where you were for summertime. This trip that we've done for an exhibition of your works um, inspired by Italy at the beginning of this, the 70s, when you were going to, to be immersed in uh, Arte Povera, as you told me, was a way to remind something very positive and enthusiastic, I think. It um, was the, the beginning of that uh, period of doing uh, 
conceptual work. I don't know if that's what I can call it, oh. but uh, it was a, a period that lasted only a few years, not very long. But uh, I think I think the work I, I did then were um, were important for me. As a passage to something else, or because I think your conceptual artworks, especially the walks that you have done between the two museums in Montreal or in the oil uh, refineries or was a kind of way to connect the dance. But I left, I left a sculpture. Yeah. And I, I could have continued. <laughs> it, it was, uh, I, I was uh, troubled by what was going on. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, all in all, at first, when I was very young, I wanted to do painting, and I passed by so many different other periods of work, always in, in art. Yeah. But now I'm doing what I was <laughs> really meant to be doing. For you, when when you are working on the painting, on your new paintings, the automatist yeah. is it still a source for you, a source of thinking, inspiration? No, it's, no, no, <laughs> no. But because you said that the painting is coming by itself, it's you don't necessarily you don't draw. It's the painting which is drawing. You don't yes. draw before uh, the the shapes and the forms and so it comes. And, and it comes, it develops gradually. Yeah, it's a process. Yes. Is it difficult to, to say when you have to stop the process? I think uh, if it, the, the painting says it, it, it seems like things are in place. Okay, so when we say that it's the painting who control the painter and not the contrary. It's true in your case. The painting is expressing uh, is, uh, its force and mm -hmm. its, its power. Yes, I think that is what they call modernist painting. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've uh, been very fast on the uh, Italian works that you uh, have uh, done, but I would like to refer to, to these persons, uh, famous persons, uh, people you have met in Italy, like uh, Guy Debord and, yes. and Gianfranco Sanguinetti. Really uh, a character, but uh, an important uh, person Abs at the time. Absolutely. So Gianfranco Sanguinetti that you have uh, been able to see a year ago, after almost 50 years, said that he has discovered the refus global, total refusal. He has discovered this manifesto because you talked uh, about that with him. Well, it was inevitable. <laughs> uh, to tell Guy Debord that I had <laughs> been part of a manifesto as well. <laughs> yeah, but they, they were not. Gianfranco said that uh, at his knowledge, it's the only manifesto of the 20th century, which is so much about uh, religion, and you know Catholicism and all these content which which made total refusal more as a sociologist manifesto than an artistic manifesto. Maybe that's what was interesting to Gian Gianfranco. But throughout the history of modern painting, the uh, what is going on in the world has always been important. Yeah. So an artist is always part of the world. Yeah. Even if he's alone 
in his studio, even in a pandemic. Yes. Like, <laughs> like we're continuing. Yes. So it has, it's, it's a lot of courage to, to continue, to continue alone. More time to paint. <laughs> More time to paint. You never stop. <laughs> The next projects, we're here at the Galerie Simon Blais. So the next project is an exhibition of your very, very, no, not your recent works, your recent work plus yes. a lot of uh, your paintings since the 90s, maybe. I think your exhibition from the Musée d'Art Contemporain is also circulating soon yes. in Rimouski. Yes. Uh, also very soon. Almost, very soon. Almost at the same time. Yeah, so it's another very busy fall for you. That's good. And next March, we'll show the early, the uh, Italian works at Galerie de Lucan. You see, Françoise, it's, it gives an idea of what will be the exhibition here at uh, Simon Blé Gallery mm -hmm. for, uh, at the occasion of the uh, Toronto Art Fair. You are happy with this exhibition, but I know that each time you show your work, you want to show your more recent work. Mm. And of course. you're particularly proud of this little body on the, on the wall there. Why? Well, it was just finished this week, <laughs> just a few days ago. And the color is special for you, this color. Purple. Well, what happened is I started doing it in the country when I, I thought I was going to spend the month of September, but it didn't turn out that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was difficult to go back. Finally, I did go back and get the painting, what, four days ago. And then I spent the rest of the following day painting. Thank you, Françoise.